So last week I introduced a new tool to the channel, a tool called Smart Suite. It is a relational database in the cloud, excellent for project management, and I have been getting flooded with a ton of questions about this new software. So I wanna break down one of the most common questions I've been getting, it's asking about formulas. How do formulas work in Smart Suite and how is it different from what you might experience in Excel or Airtable or another relational database tool? Well, if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I am the owner at Gap Consulting and we make it our mission to help you automate the bull. In this video, we are gonna be breaking down all about formulas in Smart Suite. But before we get to that, if you're new to no-code tools in general, I strongly recommend that you get a basic understanding about the power of no-code automation. So for that, I have built a free automation training, a webinar that's gonna get you up to speed with the fundamentals in automation. Doesn't matter what software you use in order to build your automations, they all work the same. Get that training at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration and start reclaiming your time so that you stop wasting it on repetitive tasks. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of this video and jump on into Smart Suite and how the formula syntax is very different in a number of ways, but also very similar in all the key ways that matter. So let's go and break it down. We're gonna start off with a simple invoicing solution. Now really quickly, before we jump into the formulas themselves, a little bit of jargon here. The solution is the entity here. In this case, it's a purple solution called invoicing. And in here I have these two different apps. A new app is simply added by hitting that plus button that says create a new app. And just to reiterate, what's cool about Smart Suite is we can connect apps in any solution. So I can start linking apps in a totally different solution. I don't have to have the app here in invoicing in this particular place. But for our example today, we're gonna to keep it simple and I have invoices and line items. Invoices is where we're gonna collect the big data about this particular thing, right? And so in our case here, we've linked to clients and this lives in a different solution altogether. I'm linking to a different app in a different solution to find a link to those people, the people or the contacts for this business. I also have a due date for every single one of these invoices and it's connected to line items. So let's jump into our line items really quickly. This is nothing different that we've seen before in terms of creating invoices. We always have line item detail and then we sum all that data back up at the invoice level. So if we're looking here, we have a product or service that we've sold. In this case, I'm imagining I'm a landscape company. I'm selling a bag of soil. And to keep things simple, I'm just keying this in. This is just a text field. I then link to the invoice in question and I have a cost per unit. So each one of these items that we're selling is gonna have its own cost. And then I have a quantity. So the first formula we wanna build is a subtotal. What is the line items total here? If I have a cost of $100 and I've sold a quantity of five for this particular invoice, well then obviously we know the subtotal here should be 500. But how do we build a formula? It's really easy. Click on add new field and type in FOR to be brought right to the formulas. It's in this more advanced section. When we add the formula field type here, the first thing we're prompted to do is rename this field. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll call this subtotal. And we are set up originally with a very simple and straightforward formula. It's giving us four different operators. So if we wanna perform some really simple arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, it's right here. In our case, this works out perfectly. We can bring in the multiplication and I can look at these different fields. I'm looking at the cost per unit, multiplying by the quantity, and I can add this field. In addition to this, I can create some help text if you wanna write in some text about what this field does or what it is, but this is as simple as it gets. Simply point and click to the different fields that I want, in this case, cost per unit and quantity, and I'm doing a simple multiplication of those fields. Let's go ahead and add that field, and you'll see it created in just a moment. And there it is. Now I wanna point out before moving on that one small frustration I have is that I cannot change how this is showing up. I'm sure that Smart Suite is working on this and if they haven't already, I'll create a ticket myself to just ask that we can change the formatting here. 
because I'd love to be able to see this as an actual dollar amount. And we don't have the opportunity, if we go back in here and go to modify the field settings, you'll notice we don't have the opportunity anywhere to suggest that we wanna see this as a currency. So even though one of our fields here, if I were to exit without saving, go back here, my cost per unit is a currency field type. That's how I've set up this field. Even though I'm multiplying a currency times a number, the formula that shows up here does not yet maintain that currency formatting. So again, hopefully this is a new feature that we can request and have updated in no time at all. So we've got our formula built, but again, before we move on, let's go back to modifying this particular formula and let's toggle on that advanced editor. And this is where we're gonna do our more complicated formula building. So before we get into it, I wanna point out that on the left-hand side here, we see the ability to add fields. We can click on any one of these fields and it gives us a little breakdown of what we can expect in that particular field. And then we can also click use to actually bring this field into our formula. And that's where we're gonna actually plug that field in and use it. Now we don't have to click on use, we can also type. But one thing I need to point out is that fields, when we bring them into the formulas here, they are surrounded by these square brackets. So if you're ever using a field and you're typing it out, instead of selecting it from the list, be sure to include those square brackets for that field. But where smart suite fields get really cool is where they also include a dot syntax, meaning that we can go down a layer into our data structure. So if we wanna look at a linked relationship, we can do that with a dot notation. And I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done in our next example. Before that though, let's continue scrolling down and we can look at all the different formulas and operators that we can include here. So there's the addition, division, etc., And those same helpful hints appear here as well. So if I look at the equals operator, for example, once I click that, I get a breakdown of exactly how I can use this particular operator. Or scroll on down to functions, average if, there it is right here, right? So all of this information lives here. One other thing to point out is that we get these nice icons here that help us understand what type of formula or function this is. So min median, max, these generally apply to numbers, or minute, month, now, these apply to dates, and we can tell that from this little icon here. Not or or, these are logical formulas or functions, and scrolling down, we also see that we have text. So text, trim, upper, these type of functions almost always are used in textual settings. So great little visual indication for you here, and of course, these are currently organized in alphabetical order. All right, let's break it down and flip on out of here now and flip into our invoices app. What I wanna do here is include a sum of all those subtotals that we just created. Now you may initially think that what we should do here is use a rollup field. So if we were to start here and I use the rollup field, we're gonna quickly see that if we include the link to our items, line items here, and then we include the rollup field, we don't see that subtotal that we created. And this is because the subtotal field is a formula field. And the way SmartSuite works, it doesn't yet include formula fields in our rollup field, but it doesn't have to. In fact, we get a lot more functionality by building a formula and using that dot notation. So let's take a look at how we do that. Skip this roll up, I'm gonna exit without saving, and I'm gonna add a new field, but this time use a formula. Let's include that formula here, and first I'm gonna rename this to be invoice total. And rather than using some simple arithmetic here, I don't get any results anyway, I'm gonna go right to that advanced editor. Now inside of here, what I wanna do is include my linked relationship to line items. So I'll go ahead and use my line items here, and then before I move on, I'll put a period. And as soon as I do that, I see the fields that live inside of my line items app. So in my line items app, I have the cost per unit, I have the quantity, but what I'm looking for is this subtotal right here. So I'm gonna plug this in. And essentially what this has just done is I'm now referencing the subtotal fields that live inside my linked line items. So what do I wanna do to those subtotals? Well, I wanna sum them. So I can go to the top of this and just type in sum, open parenthesis, close parenthesis on the other side of that, and it's that simple. Let's go ahead and add that field. We are getting the value of 13,100. Let's do a quick sanity check, back up into our line items and double check, and yeah, that's exactly what we would expect. 500 and 600 is 1,100, plus 12,000 is 13,100, which is exactly 
what we've calculated here. So again, that was all done going back into the field settings with a summation of the line items specifically looking at the subtotal. Now maybe we want to take this a level deeper. Let's back out of here and look back at our line items and say, is this invoiceable? So I'll include a yes, no field. This is a simple Boolean. It's either toggled on or off. And I've got a bunch of different display formats to choose from. I like the rectangular toggle. So I'll make that selection here. Go ahead and add the field here. But before doing so, I'll say invoiceable question mark and set that up. So what I'm asking myself here is, can I actually include this charge? Maybe I'm providing an estimate and then the client decides, actually, I'm going to skip the hot tub. I don't have the funds for that yet, but I'm going with the planters and I'm going with the bag of soil. Okay. So they've toggled these two things on. I don't want to roll up all of this data now. I don't want to include that 12,000 in my summation. So we can do that in our calculation. Let's jump back into invoices now. And rather than modify this existing formula, I will create a new one. So we're going to add a new field here. Again, a formula field, select it from the list. And the name here is going to be modified total. And what I'm going to do again is toggle on that advanced editor. Now inside of this, I want to do a sum if. I only want to sum those subtotals if conditions are met on the line items table. So let's go into our formula and start typing in sum. And you see that when I do this, sum if just automatically pops up as an available function. So if I click on here, first what it's going to give me is an example of how this works. And it simply says sum if. And so in this case, it's set up certain conditions. Invoice status is final. Well, if that is true, then we're going to total. We're going to look at the invoice total and sum it. And so in this case, we then see what the logical explanation or the breakdown of this formula is. And it says exactly that. If three invoices have the total values of 100, 110, and 150, and the invoice status of those invoices is set to final, then it's going to sum them up right? So easy enough. First, we're putting in our logic condition. That's the first part. And if that condition is met, then we will sum whatever we include after that comma. Pretty simple and straightforward. So let's include the sum if. So I will go ahead and use that formula and just plug it in there. First, I need to build that logical condition. And my logical condition is if that line item is toggled to invoiceable. So let's use that. So I'll use the line items. Now that I'm inside of line items, I'll hit period. And then I get the fields inside of line items. And so what am I looking for? I'm looking for that invoiceable field that I created. And you'll notice that I made a mistake and didn't even capitalize this. So the nice part about not typing that out myself is by using it here and having it available inside of the formula builder itself. Now let's just pause real quick and imagine that I forgot or didn't realize that I could just add it in like that. And I started building my square brackets and I brought it in here and said invoiceable question mark. Notice that when I do this, it doesn't take on the blue color that these other things have. So this is an indication to us that the formula doesn't recognize that this field exists. So since we know that something's wrong with this, I should go ahead and remove it. And let's instead scroll on down and include it. And now we see that it shows up with that blue text, meaning to us that our syntax is in order. However, we're not done yet. Remember, we only want to include the subtotal in the case where we have marked the invoiceable field to be yes or true. So let's set up that condition. We say equivalent to, and then inside of double quotes, type in yes. So what we're saying here is we're testing the logic to say if the invoiceable field in linked line items is equivalent to yes, then we can perform the summation. What summation do we want to perform? So that's our second parameter. We include a comma here. And now we're going to include again, a link to our line items. And then following that a period so that we can go into the fields in line items. And I'm going to now include that subtotal field. Again, make sure that we're taking a look at the syntax here. I'm looking at my linked relationship to line items with a period telling me then that I'm going a layer deeper inside of that linked relationship to look at the subtotal. 
So if we go ahead and save this field now, we are good to go. I now have my modified total showing up at 1100, which is what we expect. If we flip back to line items, remember we're only summing 500 plus 600, which is 1100. Now, if the customer here does finally approve that hot tub, I can toggle it on, go back to my invoices, and that field is going to get updated to reflect the full total of all of those line items. I know we broke down a lot here. That dot syntax is super powerful inside of SmartSuite. Go ahead and test it out yourself. Check out our affiliate link below if you haven't already signed up for SmartSuite. It would really help the channel out. And if you wanna stay on top of no code and no code news, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's it for this one. I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.